Welcome to Oral Hygiene, where we talk about caught and educational films and weird little daubles and baubles like that that show up on your films. Uh, this is Matt. Andrew is there today. Hi, Andrew. Hi, hi, hi. I'm working out. I'm retooling the introduction, but I haven't gotten there yet, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, today is your suggestion. I feel mm. like you, you're giving it more as a representative slice of <laughs> this kind of thing. And if I'm wrong, do correct me. But this is a uh, Fleischer cartoon, Play Safe, from yeah. 1936. And I'm pretty sure this was on at least one episode of Pee Wee's Playhouse from the King of Cartoons. Oh, it probably was because he showed a lot of those freaky old ones, you know. Yeah. Um, no, the reason why I chose Play Safe is because it ticks a lot of the boxes of this show um, because it is a safety film, right? Right. But it's also animation, which I don't think we've talked about an animated safety film, have we? No. No. And so it was unique in that regard, but also the terror of youth, the terror of kids, which seems to be a recurring theme, and I don't know why. Um, but I just find the Fleischers to be so unnerving for some reason. And Can you um, this... give a breakdown of this one? Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is about a little boy who's obsessed with trains and decides to actually get on a real one. And he gets thrown off, gets knocked out, and has the freakiest nightmare <laughs> that scares him into never wanting to uh to mess with trains again he probably never boarded you'll never board a train again yeah yeah he goes home and i guess would then burn all of his toys maybe this is little truman from the truman show this is where he's losing his urge like okay i can't take a train anymore he can't take a boat anymore that's why he just stays in his town (laughs) yeah this is the so this is the prequel to the truman show right yeah that's that's pretty much the plot it's only it's less than 10 minutes there's like a six or seven and it's something like that but uh it has some really great like surprisingly it's just freaky once yeah. the trip starts for the kid i'm looking at going like i'm not entirely sure how they did some of this it's hard to believe that the fleischer cartoons were mostly um made before lsd was first synthesized okay <laughs> there you are no better description than that um the ones some of the ones I guess the one caveat if you are diving into this pool is it can get really, this one doesn't, but it can get really racist really quick. Oh, I know. And I've seen uh, my, my daughter went through a Betty Boop phase where we were watching those cartoons and my God, there's some just deeply racist Betty Boop. Was it, I'll, I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal you, or it's the head of Louis Armstrong chasing Betty Boop or something. That, um, which is the one that shows up in the movie, The Forbidden Zone? I want to say it's that one. It might be. I I uh, I just straight up sit around and sometimes watch the Louis Armstrong and Cab Calloway cartoons. So I don't remember where they've like made appearances. I just know the. I want to say that um, Forbidden Zone is a it's a great movie, but it's got uh, there's just real lot of iffiness surrounding. I mean, I don't want to go into my feelings about rockabilly, but uh, because I just there's just something. I tie it to deep racism with rockabilly also. Uh, but it's it's got to do with uh, Danny Elfman's obsession with Cab Calloway from back then. And yeah. the, the music he and his brother Richard Elfman were doing. And the fact that I think Richard does show up in blackface at one point mm-hmm. um, in the movie The Forbidden Zone, which is otherwise I consider pretty good. So there, yeah, this all darts around toward that. That has a particularly nightmarish song. Nightmarish song in it. Uh, was it Bing Bang Boom, Zip Zam Zoom, something like that? Yeah, that shows up in my nightmare sometimes. Yeah, no, it's it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm glad you're on you're on the same page as me with this thing. Uh, it's I've so, only watched it once. <laughs> it, 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 but it is. It, how would how would you say it functions as a as a safety movie though? Oh, oh, sorry, I was t- still talking about Forbidden Zone, but yes, we should be switching over to uh, Play oh, Safe. <laughs> that's fine <laughs> okay um no play safe i does I, I don't think it's appeared in my nightmares but like i said i probably i think i did i think this was screened on peewee's playhouse so yeah i would have first seen this like you know the age of the kid more or less so um i'm trying to think of how i took all those bizarro cartoons on that show when i was a kid so did he show them in their entirety or were they were any of nah, out of context they, or cut down they, they were seriously they were cut down to like a minute and a half i think 
Okay. So, but you know, you just, so they just, would just take the most whack images and put them together basically. Cause it's, yeah. you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse is only like, what, 24 minutes or something. They could yeah, like, yeah, show yeah, the true. full nine minute, minute cartoon in there. So yeah, they just, they distill it down. Um, and at that time, but at the time, that was the only way you're going to see something like this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube yeah, has yeah. made it ridiculous how many things, like it, I, I told you, I was reading the book, uh, The Miracle Factory with uh, about D.W. Griffith. I'm like, crap, I can just get on YouTube and just like have a, you know, quick squiz at a bunch of these silent films, some of which I've seen. I actually, back when I was a total film dork, I did watch, you know, Birth of a Nation and Tolerance in their entirety. So, yeah. <laughs> the clan or the hero well um when it comes to tex avery though um tex avery there's not a lot of it can be found on youtube no is that no screw was it screwball squirrel or yeah there's uh, a lot of the ones that uh a lot of people are familiar with the droopy and things like that um yeah they are not you can't find the full cartoons on youtube is that legal video. stuff or is it a memory hole or what i think it's legal stuff because they can i mean it's the blu-ray discs that with the collections and stuff they want they want their money yeah yeah i, I guess, guess yeah i mean you can't i guess you wouldn't be able to find a lot of the warner brothers stuff on youtube yep so uh it's you know my daughter's 12 now so it's been a good six years since i went trying for animation on youtube so <laughs> oh yeah yeah no we, we like watching some of the uh i really tried to find um a lot of the ones where they can't make noise yeah <laughs> and so they're trying just to me those as a kid were hilarious and as an adult the pieces i've been able to find on youtube usually awful quality and only like a snippet of the you know but there's, it, uh, there's a pretty deep fleischer rabbit hole you can fall into so um yeah i i chose this one because i felt like it yeah it, it qualifies as experimental animation or at least like weird animation experimental film maybe cult film but also safety movie which yeah. we've reviewed a lot of because yeah, i was when you mentioned it, i was actually eyeing one of those uh, longer uh, popeye features which has a lot of the same animation styles right it does yeah true this just i mean the kid goes on a trip to hell pretty much <laughs> yeah um, yeah, yeah. Because, train hell <laughs> yeah he's playing with his trains in his yard and then um he hears the real train outside and so you know, he starts running out and the dog, his dog, uh, grabs him and brings him back. So he saves him from possibly getting killed by a train. He lives very close to the train track. P.S. It's like <laughs> right just after his yard. And so it's almost like a pet cemetery situation. Waiting I'm almost I'm almost that close to the train track. There is a drop, though, first. <laughs> OK, yeah. No, this is literally open fence train. Yeah, so, <laughs> there's a there's a house between me and the train track. And then oh, yeah. and then maybe like a small field, a, a like very small farming field, and then it's train. So so it <laughs> stops. Kid jumps out and jumps on while the dog is asleep. Um, and then uh, of course he ties the dog before he runs off. Ties the dog to the tree. So when the dog realizes what the kid's doing, he tries to go after him. Can't. Kid is immediately thrown from train. Hits his head on the track, and then starts this descent into madness where he's. Uh, not only controlling the train as a conductor but the controls start to yell at him that he's going too fast they break disappear but it's the part where the mountains are shown and when the train's going in and out of the mountains did that look like i mean it was this weird three-dimensional the mountains oh yeah yeah like yeah that, they built a build a model for some of that stuff right going okay that had to have been a model yeah it was a model yeah. that was one of the fleischer um things because the the popeye ones i was mentioning do the same thing where they'll film these model caves and then animate over it so that okay. was what i don't know if superman cartoons did that or not. but yeah that was one of his tricks of the trade um this has a lot of the multi-plane camera stuff right so yeah that's yeah even these... even you know it's pretty pretty cool animation definitely it is but for a child these trains there's two at one point while he's having his nightmare, they're on a collision course and the, the train he's in screams and it's got these black teeth. And then the other train screams and has black teeth. <laughs> so um, here, here's what I wrote. I wrote these trains come from the Thomas multiverse where all the trains are on peyote. And then I wrote, do you think that George Carlin or Ringo Starr gave those trains the peyote? 100%. <laughs>
<laughs> Which one? I mean, my my money would be on Ringo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George would have kept it for himself. <laughs> he would have definitely and given himself another heart attack. Yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then at the end, I mean, I guess they're safe and sound at the end of them. Like, come on, that that dog is now just a smear of blood and gore, and you know, so is the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's the thing because if you wake up on the train track i don't remember what happened does the dog get free in time to grab him off the track or does his kid wake up and get uh, off of there just in time because they it get is a like, cautionary they know. get like bounced to safety by the train or something it's kind of oh, weird no. like like there's definitely a collision and then they kind of like fly in the air or something and they're okay but it's like, no, no no they just turn into like spots of blood and gore <laughs> that's yeah, a if fast moving was... train yeah, if this was made in live action and it was British and it was around the late 60s, <laughs> early 70s, 70s, late 70s. Yeah, they would have definitely, um, they would have just been, you know, a memory. Lines and lines of bodies as we've gotten to before. So, yeah, it takes out the whole, all the neighborhood kids are on the track running to them out of concern. And then it just takes them all out like a bunch of bowling pins. Are I, I see I'm I'm so out of America now. Are are American kids like train obsessed? No. Okay. Not in the least. Okay. I mean, there could be some, but it's the same thing with like dinosaurs and stuff. Mm. It doesn't seem to be like a general thing. See, in Japan, you know, maybe because we have so many more trains everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah the, the boys are just train obsessed. You know, Thomas is like a demigod in Japan, right? Is that right? <laughs> Well, also the parts idea have... of uh, being a useful engine, which is, I think, the, the, the what Thomas's <laughs> real thing is really trying to train people for the workplace. I, I heard something like um, kids with autism like really get into Thomas because I guess the faces are kind of have expressions, but not that much. So true. Somehow, somehow yeah. it seems to hit a sweet spot for for that. So I can see um, that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, amusement well, parks in Japan have like Thomas sections, you know. <laughs> oh man. Well, now, um, you know, uh my dad had a he blew a lot of the family's grocery money <laughs> and and every money on this giant train set that he built when uh, I was in probably 6th grade. Uh do you remember that thing? Of course, we used that to film stop motion animation on. <laughs> yes, we did. Young Fleischers that had no idea. Uh, we um, this thing was massive. It easily took up one quarter of this um, downstairs room of our split level house. And so, um, I would say, yeah, I I did I did see what train obsession was like. Right, and you can see the thing if you go to the uh, YouTube clip of of Got the Time. You'd probably need to write I don't know 1990 with that or something. But uh, yeah, that's on the Gonzerific channel. Yeah, you can see a bit of the uh, of that set in there because that's where we did some of the stop motion. So no, that was a very cool set. Uh, too too bad your grocery money didn't show up. But <laughs> no, Dad was um, he he would get obsessed with things and then just, he wasn't good with money. <laughs> so we're but, like cool train stomach growls <laughs> so this kid's gonna you know like end up as one of them boxcar kids especially in the 30s hopping trains like that yeah i mean he seems like that's what he wants <laughs> i mean just put him on the train he's obviously gonna kill himself if he's not on a train <laughs> you know how, he's gonna die trying to get on one how old do you think this kid was supposed to be four two I, see that's what i was thinking he's probably four yeah it was kind of hard, I guess, the, just the design of the character looked a little younger, but he moved a little older. So, yeah, no, I would say four because he still doesn't have that fully full consciousness of imminent danger. I wish he never talked, though, you know, like Dumbo. When people are like, who's your favorite Disney character? I'm like, because kids in that a lot in Japan, I'm like Dumbo, because he doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, no, it can get. No, he was. Uh, it's hard to. I don't know. You you feel scared for the kid because he's a kid, uh, and you're definitely scared for the dog because you're not an asshole. But man, yeah, at, at a point you're like, all right, kid, this is what you want here. And I think that's the lesson that it's supposed to teach. You know, like stay away from the train tracks. But just like a lot of things we talked about on this show, they really just miss the mark in terms of educational value. 
And, unless you're trying to learn how to trip out, then it's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> it functions in a way that I don't know if they intended uh, this one. But I was like, this kid deserves to have the gauges, gauges, whatever, all scream at him. So, yeah, <laughs> which no, is also was... a very trippy thing, of course. Well, everything in this is pretty trippy, except for like the first five seconds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. As soon as the kid starts talking, <laughs> <laughs> it's his voice that does it. Yeah, his, his it voice. Is. His voice tears the the universe asunder. Yeah, and it, and it does have that look that you were talking about earlier, uh, of of that area, and those because there were so many Fleischer cartoons, and so um, I think it's when you start watching it and he descends into hell madness. That that's really like half of the Fleischer more. cartoons, though. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> Descending into hell is a normal trope in these cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> so one could do a decent compilation of uh of you know kids stuff from from uh, Max Fleischer. That's. I just wonder like... what kind of nightmares Max Fleischer had. <laughs> God, there's something to think about. Maybe his dreams were just super ordinary. Imagination is a cruel mistress. At least that's what Epcot Center taught me. Is that? It's the journey into. Are you? Have you been to Epcot Center? I, as a kid, yeah, I went. Um, when did it open? Because I was there in like eighty six or eighty seven. It was like eighty two. You were there when it was still like real old school Epcot. So you. you oh no! Yeah, that. I've got pictures of the um, the world of imagination. Yeah, because that one people loved it, and then they changed it and they completely took out Figment. They were they replaced Figment the Dragon with Eric Idle, <laughs> or something like that. And then they kind huh. of added him back in, but the, the parent people just say the ride is never that wonderful. Um, I don't know. No, it was. I know that it was in its first years when we were there. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I think that may have been. You know, speaking of things that Dad blew money on, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, which isn't Disney great? Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's either the Figment doll or breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I, I went there I mean, a little more than ten years ago with the you know, regular co-host Mark, but, um, and we enjoyed it, but we'd also just had a couple of margaritas at the Mexico pavilion. So we were sure. going to enjoy everything. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely. No, completely different. Yeah. But, uh, no, that, uh, I mean, um, I, gosh, what would I get if I still had that figment? It was plush. I wonder if my, <laughs> there might still be one in my parents' barn. I know we had one of those. So, <laughs> Hmm. But uh, yeah, because I, for some reason, had a see. I should probably talk to a therapist one day. Why do I have so many stuffed animals as like a ten-year-old? <laughs> Is that right? I don't remember that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, in my room there was like a netting in the corner, and we just stuffed with a bunch of stuffed animals. I don't remember that at all, yeah. dude. Ma okay, I maybe I, maybe I took it down sooner than I remember. So <laughs> maybe you saw me coming up the driveway. And I'm like, oh man, we got to do something with this. That might be the case. <laughs> Um, right. He's just not going to understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, when my daughter was young, my wife would get pissed off at me because I keep buying stuffed animals for, for my daughter. Right. So, because right. <laughs> I, I like buying them. And, um, I, I think, I, yeah, I mentioned getting literally pissed when she said she threw away lots of on the cookie monster. I did save them though. So that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they were saved. They, they were not quite, they were in the, they were in a garbage bag, but now you can't throw lots away. He'll come back and like stab you in the night. <laughs> this is true. I mean, that's not the one you want to trifle with. If I was going to pick one to throw away, that would definitely be a way in the bottom of this. Now he is sitting in the corner of a storage, uh, ooh, a storage closet at my office at the moment, but Hey, he's still there. Right. He doesn't yeah, smell like strawberries say. anymore though. The strawberry smell finally went away. <laughs> Hey, just you know just keep him there and keep him happy so it doesn't begin smelling like iron and uh, pennies yeah the kid blood. it's supposed to be for the kids you know the students there to play with but uh they've been keeping the stuffed animals at work sort of uh stowed away because of covid i guess so oh no that makes sense <laughs> yeah so at, so at some point i hope to air out lots so again uh, I do use the Cookie Monster extensively to the point where kids are like, "Where's the Cookie Monster?" I'm like, I don't want to do Cookie Monster today. <laughs> we go upstairs. Put it on a string. Go. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, yet another train film. I get. Is there more train accidents in the past than I thought? Because there seems to be an awful lot. You know, I don't know, and things. that's. I didn't even think of that until you said something. But yeah, 
this is these have had a lot of well i think because a lot of safety movies were made for for kids to keep kids out of danger and for some reason the train is a big one because it's in your neighborhood it's down the street and it looks cool but man is it gonna mess you up <laughs> yeah our train tracks were pretty far away so we didn't make it there much no um but where i live now they're you know i could just look about i could probably walk to some you know but again they're it's it's clear between the sidewalk and it's, there's not a track where one I, could I just can, like i could throw a stone out my window and hit the train track if that house wasn't there but uh wow. that is <laughs> yeah, close I, maybe i could angle it and hit it yeah i think that i could angle it a little bit and hit the train track <laughs> but uh yeah i train safety just it's I, I, I that's something we've learned on the oral hygiene podcast there is an awful lot of train films <laughs> over and over and over again but this is one of the most bizarre i'm gonna i'm gonna put that out there sure yeah i'll go agree with that <laughs> uh, uh wrapping up today tell them where you're at oh okay so uh gonzerific.com we mentioned it earlier about the youtube channel yeah you can see some of the early movies that um your host here and i made um, you were nine when I met you so in the late eighties, was it eight, Some, around 87, something like that, 80? something like that. I remember cause I was friends with your brother, but we had a wrestling competition and I threw everyone to the ground and then they didn't want to play with me anymore. <laughs> yeah. A little, too, <laughs> a little too much fun. If that, if that could be a thing. Um, but yeah, I have digitized some of our old movies. And so you can go to G O N Z O R I F F I C.com gonzorific.com. And there's a portals for the YouTube channel. Uh, and um, you can search by the date on those old ones. Um, also, there are Instagram, Twitter, and uh, the DVD store where you can buy. Uh, one of these days, I'll I'll make a disc available of the classic old old stuff. But I I showed them in the theater one year uh, from my birthday. We watched all my old stuff, old movies, like in front of an audience. Um, it was free to get in, but you had to pay to get out. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, this is oral hygiene. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook under that kind of name. You can you can tell us stuff. You can tell us your favorite train film. Tell us about the Popo. Sorry, Popo is train in Japan, not the cops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Cause... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Because no, that's the sound. They, they don't say toot toot. They say Popo. I like that better. It sounds less like a fart. Yeah. Does it? poot it's very close to poot <laughs> <laughs> oh god we're really gonna go there yeah there's also um we're under the patreon umbrella of podcastio podcastius where we also talk about the twilight zone sci-fi movies monster hunter pokemon come check it out come hang out that sort of thing we give you episodes early when we are ours to do so <laughs> so uh <laughs> okay so play safe folks Popo.